You know it's young E class, Mr. Mob, bitch, Mr. Thirteenth. Make sure y'all go get that motherfucker bag season two, a hundred thousand streams and counting. Make sure y'all tune in to Smack Life TV. We out here. I miss Thirps and Christmas. Can you niggas picture this? Tap two tears on my arms with a scripture. Young E class, Mr. Mob, bitch, Mr. Thirteenth, artist, philanthropist, entrepreneur, yeah. CEO. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do some acting yeah. shit. All around real nigga. Yeah. All around original nigga, authentic nigga. No, Mr. Thirteenth though. We're gonna start with the philanthropy, like right? you do a lot giving back, you know what I'm saying, to the community. Like, we inspired that. Like we we gave you that hunger to wanna even give back. Cause a lot of people see stuff and just look the other way. Man, growing up, I used to be one of them people that used to like get charity. I was one of the kids in line, you know, getting the toys and shit. So I understand, like I, I understand them. Like I used to be them and shit. So like uh like I probably I don't know if I said it then, but it's like, you know, when you get in a better position, where you come from, you gonna look back on it and shit, and it feel good to be able to be the person that's giving back now. Yeah. Cause you know exactly what that kid feeling like when they, you know, when they in that line, they just like, no matter what the reasons are on even end, why a person giving and mm -hmm. why a person bringing you to get, you know at the end of the day, you want it. You right. feel what I'm saying? So yeah, it, just, it just feel good to be able to do it. That's all, it's like putting yourself in a position and you can help a motherfucker out. And, if that shit pass on like that, like everybody make sure everybody's straight. So when you start with the music, when? When I was a couple years in on my bit for real. Like I fucked around with it when I was young, but you know, being from the area, being from being from the city, like they ain't they ain't fuck with that shit back then. Nah, uh, you had to call it like man. some New York shit. Yeah, you had to fuck with the go go and shit, so I, uh, I did it, but I did it with motherfuckers that, you know, that rap too and shit, lunch from table shit. I ain't never think I could go further with it just because it wasn't something normal here. And then being so young, when I used to rap, I was like 11, 12. I was talking gangster shit. I was like talking, I was on house arrest for armed robbery and I was talking the shit that I was, you feel me? Yeah. So the studios, like Chocolate City and them jokes back in the day, they was like, man, nobody trying no little kid talk about that shit. Yeah. But that's all I knew and shit. They wanted to create like a Bow Wow, but like I wasn't living like that. So I couldn't really talk no Bow Wow shit. Right. So when I went there, I ran into dudes that was like almost on their way to making it, but they call life bits and shit. So they put a lot of that shit in me. Like Pistol, he taught me how to write and shit. So uh, I took it serious in there. And one thing I know about prison, niggas don't fuck with niggas for shit. So if you get a nigga to fuck with you on something, that mean a lot. So I had niggas talking that mob and shit in there. And I was like, damn, if niggas in here fuck with me, I know niggas on the street gonna fuck with me. Your process of creating music, you you like to write? Or is it yeah. times you go in there and freestyle it? Yeah, I could freestyle. I came from freestyling. Okay. But I love writing because I love expression and tapping into emotion. Mm -hmm. And you could tap into them both ways, but you could stay there while you writing. Because right. when you freestyling, it's just in the moment emotions. But when you writing, it's you pulling band-aids off, you jumping, you feel me? Yeah. So I, I love writing, I love the process of writing, but uh, I can do both though. Okay. Coming from the city, how that, how that influence your music? Uh, well, for our, you know, for our shit, it's just the authenticity and you know, we represent, like, you know, we ain't like on no gang culture and shit. Right. The politics different in our streets. So it's on your last name, it's on your neighborhood, where you from, like, you know, who you grew up with and shit, so. And, you know, we talk shit, like we join and so that yeah. shit, you gotta come right. So it's just, all that shit influence you to be the best you when you jumping out there with that music shit, for real, for real. So I say it, it influence, like, everything around the sound of what I'm doing, influence, it polishes, you know, the image and everything. What would you say was the first time you seen your wave taking off out here? Probably, uh, no, I, I can't really answer. I could answer, but it's a different type of answer because when I seen somebody make a young E-class type beat, 
I was like, what the fuck? Nah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> so dog. I'm like, they made a beat after, like, you know, because they shaped them beats around the artist flow, yeah. what they think that artist would be on. So when I seen that, I was like, damn, did a nigga, like, break through and shit? <laughs> yeah, so that that was my feel. It wasn't even on the way. It was just on the fact that somebody listened to me enough to recognize my sound to, to duplicate it. Right. And you feel me? I put it out there. So, yeah, I, I say that. What type of sound do you think you had? What did you say you had? Honestly, it's it's just it's because I could go on any style, any type of beat, yeah, any type of genre, any type of wave. Like, as long as I like it, as long as I'm feeling it, I ain't saying I'm just jumping out there with anything. But if I like it and I feel it, but it's in a different lane, like you got West Coast type beats. Like we was just talking in there, and they asked what I had picked this certain Nipsey Hussle beat like. Like, I could go on that shit. I could go on some down south shit, some east coast shit. I could go on some boom bath shit. I could go on some trap shit. So, my shit is just diverse. Like, like it ain't really box. Like, I can't, that shit, that shit, and that come from, like, being away so long. Like, I missed every genre of music, so I wasn't influenced by a certain sound. So, I could just, like, lock in with whatever. Operating within the DMV, within the music line. Like, how is that? Like operating in the DMV is it's trendy. Our area is trendy. We pick up on trends and we ride them and shit for real, for real. So you might strike something and they fuck with you type of shit. It ain't it ain't nothing guaranteed. No matter if you lit or if you not lit, it's still ain't nothing guaranteed when it comes to the people. Right. Cause it's a it's a trendy area and shit. You just got you just got be on your shit. They gonna either fuck with it or they ain't. You feel me? But if they fuck with you outside here. This early is gonna fuck with you, period. Like, if they see niggas fucking with you, the people fucking with you, the blogs fucking with you, they gonna, because that's trendy and shit. Right, right. What's the area that, that you saying, like, really gravitated to your music that you was like, damn, I ain't know they'd be listening to me all the way out there? Well, just from off looking at, like, Spotify and your Apple Music shit, you can see being in other countries. So, right. when I pass, like, 500 plays and it was it was somewhere in china i'm like what the fuck yeah like the shit fuck it said like mainland china yeah so first of all i don't know what the fuck that is but shout out to them but i didn't know what it was so i'm like so it caused me to look it up and see i want to know if they spoke english over there because i'm like how the fuck i get 500 plays over there I, yeah. I don't know nobody over there i don't like what the fuck so when I be saying shit in different countries and shit, that blow my mind. But as far as in the uh, states, North Carolina be rocking with me. Like they, they North Carolina rock with that nigga hard. That's tough. And I got and I get like, but my streams is the most on the West Coast though. Like all through L.A., Compton, Phoenix, Portland, yeah, like Seattle, yeah. all that shit. Like my shit be booming over there. Any artists out there try or uh, producers try link up with you from over there? Yeah, I work with I work with a few over there. That shit unreleased, so I don't want to really keep it low key. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I I work with some over there, John. Uh, that should be love. They vibe over there a little different than I was, but uh, that shit that shit that shit cool though. Yay. So uh, what's your goals with the music? Well, all around. We're going to start with the music, but what's your goals like moving forward? From moving from the music into, you know, the different uh, business ventures. Are you talking different, about like, like, like all around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One thing I did learn is you don't know what you want to do or don't want to do until you get exposed to new shit from it. Yeah. So I know I wanted to rap. Yeah. That's all I ever wanted to do. So since I started rapping, Somehow I got pushed into model yeah, shit. Yeah, and okay. I've been modeling, I've been on campaigns with Levi's, posters all over. How that, man? That shit was crazy. Yeah, like, you like, you can't imagine, like, you see yourself tagged. Like, you know, when the Instagram, that you know you tagged on something. Yeah. So you pick up your phone, you're like, what the fuck is this? And you look, oh, and you're yeah. like, you on a motherfucker poster somewhere yeah, else and shit. Yeah. So that was huge. Like, a big yeah, ass poster, too. So that's huge. And, uh, then end up sliding, getting into acting and shit. And, uh, I never thought I'd fuck with that. So it opened you up. It, it, it opened you up to shit that you only know you fuck with for real. Yeah. But I love the music, though. I love music. The goal with it is just to be great. You know? Just to inspire, just to motivate, just to talk that shit that uh, enlighten a motherfucker or wake a motherfucker up and want to go get some money. Okay. All right, so uh, what projects you got out right now? 
Alright, right now I'm pushing that bag season two. Yay. That's 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 the one. I'm gonna say that's the one. If you want your first impression of young E class, go listen to that. But I got old projects too, like ten days I dropped that songs I came home. Oh God, Broken Promises, Bag Season One. I got a mixtape called Return to the Car that when I went over all different car to beats. Lil Wayne jumps. Hey, but, that's a high. And I got a bunch of cover songs out there. Like I got endless music. Like they could just Google that shit, Young E Class, all platforms, YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, all that shit. But uh and I got collab with uh, DJ Fred Styles, Concrete Monster, and we got a new single out called City on Fire that they've been spinning on the radio like three times a week on local radio and what's that shit called? Sir, Sirius XM, Shade yeah. 4 5 shit. Hey, that's all right. Yeah, they've been showing nigga love. All right, as far as your music visuals. Oh, yeah, YouTube the things, things up on YouTube. We got. Uh, Prometheus, that's 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 my jump right there. Yeah. Forever thirteen, <laughs> no love, all night. That's a female giant. Uh, and you type in young E class, all the videos gonna pop up and a bunch of interviews and shit. Make sure y'all go watch that motherfucker Prometheus. That shit sound different. 